Shannon, this is a great show. I couldn't agree more. It, it, you know, you never know. It could be one of the, it could be the best show we've ever done, right? It, it could be. It, it's the best show we've done today for sure. Yeah, for sure. And it could have the biggest impact on your life out of all the hundreds and 287, 286 shows that we've done before, especially because there's a, but there's a lot of transformational information here uh, about breaking through barriers to your success. It, yeah, we we often say and we always know that we are the ones that are in our own ways, right? Like we're our own worst yeah. enemies, if you want to say it that way. But but we're the we're the barricade. We're the we're the ones that and we can choose to remove those barricades with some intention. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about uh, with our guest. Yeah, today. We have a great guest yeah. that's going to give us uh, a bunch of tools to help us with confidence and you know, uh, just how we think about money and success. And I'm really excited to hear from uh, Michelle Molitor today. It's going to yeah, be great. Absolutely. We've got, uh, we've got a new, well, it's a new sponsor for the show, but it's not new to listeners of the show because we've had the founder of this business yeah. on. That's right. So it's Build HR, and you can learn more at yourhrsource.com slash pricing. We'll talk more about the details of this in the midst of the episode. Are you ready to get to uh, to this, Shannon? I'm ready to small business. Let's uh, do it. Let's small business. He is Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton. This is episode 287 of the Small Business Show. So kind of like a brain detective. I go in and I and I help pull out these bits and pieces of disparate information, which might sound kind of random when you look at it individually, but when you put them all together. For me, it helps me see a very clear picture of, oh, now I understand why you created that belief about yourself that you're not enough or you're not worthy or you're not lovable or um, money is not available to you or success isn't available to you, whatever those things might be. And from there, we literally rewrite the story because in a state of hypnosis, your, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. So we reimagine those events, literally eliminating the emotional charge around it, which is what's the thing that keeps you stuck and replacing it with different thoughts. Joining us today is an expert in the field of transforming your mindset, building your confidence, and helping you create success. Michelle Molitor has helped thousands of clients break through barriers to success. She's an experienced executive coach, a best-selling author, founder of Nectar Consulting, and get this, a rapid transformational therapist, which I'm really interested in. I love it. Exactly, That's great. Yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> what that means. Thanks so much for coming on the show today, Michelle. We really appreciate it. Oh, so happy to be here. Thanks to you both. Yeah, this is this is cool because we we really believe in this stuff, and so uh, having you come on and share your story is is great. So, before we get out there and, and really tell everybody the secrets to success, share some background with our listeners, if you will. Discuss how you got into this uh, coaching and therapy field and how you started Nectar. Absolutely. So, uh, I actually used to be a creative director in my former life. Um, I was building. Uh, helping to build multi-million dollar websites at the height of the dot-com boom that moved me here uh, to the San Francisco Bay Area, where I've been for the last 20 years now. And um, it was a very exciting time. I thought I had my million dollar golden ticket. <laughs> we were going to IPO the week I started. It was like, woo, right? And uh, the market crashed that week instead. <laughs> and But we kept going and toiling on and you know, I was growing my team of this, um, you know, hot dot com startup. And uh, I hired a couple of folks um, in particular who made it uh, pretty clear very quickly that they didn't like working for a woman. And they um, did a lot of things to undermine me and essentially bullied me out of my job. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, it was it was pretty devastating to me. I had never encountered that level of corporate jockeying and, and, you know, elbowing for position. And, uh, I didn't have the tools then 
to handle it. And it, it just, it just crushed me. My confidence was shattered quite frankly. And so I, I was let go and I was like, wow, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> and so, um, my, my uncle in his wisdom said, why don't you hire a coach? And there's these things called career coaches. Now I was like, what's that? Okay. Where do I find one? And so I, I found a coach, I hired them and in working with them, it was like all the cells in my body came into alignment and my, my heart, my spirit went, yes, this, this is actually the work that you're here to do. So, um, I went on and got trained and certified as a professional coach and, um, really quite frankly, out of fear more than anything, I started my own company, Nectar Consulting, um, almost 19 years ago. Wow. Coming up in October. Yeah. The thought of handing my resume um, to join some corporate entity was so frightening to me. I was like, I'll just, I'll just start my own company. Sure. I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. So I was like, I'll figure this out. No problem. (laughs) So uh, that's what I did. I started my company and off I went to the races and I've been coaching people professionally all over the world now uh, since then. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a learning junkie. I'll admit it. Um, I love learning and, and how do I get out of my own way to be the best coach that I can be, um, letting go of layers of, of fears and self doubts and worry that we all come with in various ways, shapes and forms. And so I've done a lot of work on myself. Um, I've spent probably hundreds of thousands of dollars on trainings and certifications and various modalities. And, um, throughout that process, I've become lighter and brighter and more present and more grounded and more confident over the years. And, you know, there was still one or two places within me that I knew I had stuck spots that I had a blind spot, but I couldn't quite get at. I knew it was there, but I didn't know how to get at it despite all of my best effort Sure. and years and years and years of, um, doing, you know, internal excavation. <laughs> so I, I happened to stumble upon the work of Marissa Peer. She's a world renowned therapist. And she pioneered this methodology called rapid transformational therapy. And it's a fascinating combination of um, cognitive behavioral therapy, neuro linguistic programming and hypnosis kind of mm. all rolled up into one. And, and so I did some work with her and I, I'm not exaggerating, literally in a matter of weeks, those stuck spots that I had been trying to get at for probably 20 years were gone, were wow. eliminated. So and let, I, let, let, let me stop right there. I, I want to ask yeah. you more about this, but, I, but I, you said something as you were talking about your, your history here, which really struck me, was that mm-hmm. you said, you know, out of fear... I went and started my own company and, and I really, <laughs> yes. I, 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 you can, I don't think you can put too fine a point on that, how important that is. And I tell a story a lot, that, you know, like I joke around and say, well, I started my first business because I didn't want to go on a job interview. Wow. I was, you know, kind of yeah, thing. So exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's fascinating how that motivation has had such a transformational, uh, you know, point your, your whole career. Right. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's, a, it's we, amazing. And, we say here often that, uh, you know, listeners to the show know one of our favorite things, and it was a piece of advice we got from a guest that we had on the show several years ago, was don't make fear-based decisions. And by and large, <laughs> I think that's excellent advice, right? Like it really, you don't want to just be, you want to be thoughtful and you want to plan and all of those things. Right. However, certainly true for all three of us here and probably true for most entrepreneurs out there, that decision to go into business for yourself for me, and and it sounds like for the two of you too, was very much a fear-based decision. <laughs> so yes. this is an interesting little dichotomy. Yeah, exactly. Yep. No, that, that, yep. that's really cool. And so, okay, let, let's jump back and talk about this rapid rewiring, rapid transformational. That when I'm looking, you know, on your website and on LinkedIn, I see those terms a lot. And they, they seem pretty powerful because we all want things so fast. Yes. How, how does that work, you know, where it's so quick and, and you're able to get the, you know, get people through these barriers in, in a nutshell, if you will? Sure, sure. So um, the, the training and the certification that I've been through combined with all of my years of coaching um, enables me to essentially have a conversation with your subconscious mind. 
Okay. okay. And everything that's ever happened to you is stored nice and neatly in your subconscious, right? It's all there because your subconscious is just a repository. Everything just goes in and sticks, right? And so um, any of the beliefs, any of the traumas, uh, any of the fears, judgments, et cetera, that you have taken on anywhere in your lifetime, but particularly Particularly when you were a child, before you had the emotional capability to deal with and process that stuff, um, it's all in there. So, in inside of my thirty day program with folks, um, I'm able to to start with this rapid transformational therapy session, or RTT for short. And um, inside of that two hour session, I'm able to help you release sink into a very relaxed state it's called an alpha brainwave state it's that kind of half awake half asleep place yeah yep. and it's where your super learning happens because your your subconscious is very available and your critical judging mind is basically taking a nap right it's like gotten out of the way for a little while so i go in and i'm able to to ask you you're awake you're conscious you're able to answer my questions but your body is very very relaxed and <laughs> You're able to um, allow your subconscious to release and bubble up to the surface the information that gives us clues and information about the the stuck spot that you're dealing with, the block, the barrier, the limiting belief, even the physical ailments that you might be dealing with, right? That, you know, some folks have been dealing with for decades. And that that information gives me clues. I'm kind of like a brain detective. I go in yeah. and I, and I help pull out these bits and pieces of disparate information, which might sound kind of random when you look at it individually, but when you put them all together, for me, it helps me see a very clear picture of, Oh, now I understand why you created that belief about yourself that you're not enough or you're not worthy or you're not lovable or um, money is not available to you or success isn't available to you, whatever those things might be. And from there, we literally rewrite the story because in a state of hypnosis, your, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. So we reimagine those events, literally eliminating the emotional charge around it, which is what's the thing that keeps you stuck. And replacing it with different thoughts. So that's one piece of it, right? Um, So that's where some of the big ahas happen and the letting go happens. But from the conversations that I've had with the client prior to our session and the beginning of our session, I have all these notes that I'm taking. And then I weave that into what I call my transformation recording. And this is about a 30-minute recording. It's the last 30 minutes of our first session. And I'm weaving in all of these new empowering beliefs, thoughts, habits, action steps in a particular way, in a particular cadence that I blend in with binaural music. And Mm. you as the client listen to this recording every day for 30 days as you're drifting off to sleep. Wow. Um, This makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I've been I've been through some versions of this and um, you're totally right. Uh, You know that we are we are the ones that are in our own ways. It's not our competition. It's not anything else. We're the ones that kind of slow us down. And so, yeah, this is this is awesome. Shannon and Michelle, I want to take a minute and tell everybody about Build HR. As I mentioned in the intro to the show, about three years ago, we had the founder of Build HR, Kelly Loudermilk, on the show. And we talked to her about her business as she was getting going. And things have leveled up quite a bit. Things have refined. And she's created a membership program, which allows you to get out of your own way in terms of this HR stuff, right? Because Build HR is your HR source in small business. They are your virtual HR department for you and your managers. So you can stop ad hocing your HR and get real professionals that can be your HR partners in your business. Because HR is more than law. HR is full of complexities beyond the federal and state laws. And having someone with knowledge in all areas of HR or as I like to say, having an HR nerd is helpful for your company growth and overall company success. And Kelly is that HR nerd. So 
They have their monthly HR support membership, which gives you and your managers and your office administrators access to a self-service library to properly maintain HR functions, stay up to date on laws and offer two minute quick training videos, how to guides and more for just $99 a month with a 14 day free trial. And you can go get that at your HR source.com slash pricing your HR source.com slash pricing. Now, there's another place that you're also going to want to go. That's your HR source.com slash COVID. They've put together some COVID resources and an email sign up so that you can get things from them about all of this stuff. They promise not to spam you. Of course, we wouldn't be telling you to join things if they were. So you want to go get your COVID resources at your HR source.com slash COVID and sign up for your 14 day free trial at your HR source.com slash pricing. Our thanks to Kelly and your HR source.com, of course, build HR for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, uh, why don't you take the next question, man? Yeah. So I, I, I love that your explanation of it, you know, getting your subconscious available, if you will, and being, you know, going back and changing the story if you need to, are, are there certain traits you kind of see over and over with your clients that you have to break through to help them succeed? Or is everybody just totally unique? Well, Yes, and everyone is totally unique. <laughs> right. And there are some common uh, theme songs, as I like to call them, right? Yeah. That um, are um, an underlying thread through a lot of different issues. Um, I found that it it boils down to simple things like I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Fill in the blank, right? Um, something's not available to me. Love, money, success. Um, health, well-being. Um, I'm different. I don't. I don't fit in. I don't belong. Um, so those are some common threads that weave through a lot of different things, and those subconscious beliefs can very quickly lead to that dis-ease in our being, which then can manifest as a physical disease in our body, whether that's chronic migraines or um, inflammatory bowel syndrome or, um, adrenal fatigue, just to name a few, not to mention the big ones like yeah. you know, cancer and heart attacks and stress, et cetera. So when you can shift those underlying beliefs from, Oh, I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I don't deserve this to, of course I'm enough. I always have been enough. I always will be enough. When you can make that shift, it, it allows your system to relax, your cortisol levels drop, your um, adrenaline levels drop, and you start producing more happy chemicals in your brain, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, which stuff. makes you feel yeah. better, yeah. which alleviates your stress. So it creates this upward spiral versus a downward spiral. Hmm. Oh, I love it. I like love the upward spiral. Yeah, that's up, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. When I look at your like your blog post up on on your website at nectarconsulting.com, I see the word confidence over and over. And it seems to me, I mean, do you spend a lot of time, you know, working on that with, you know, your clients and uh, I mean, you know, it takes a lot of confidence to go out, especially like you said earlier, you started your first business when, you know, cause you had fear and then you learned, I mean, is, is confidence something that you focus on with, with everyone? Um, it's, it's a theme that comes up a lot with folks that I'm working with. And um, they might, it might present as, yeah, I like to have more confidence to enhance my career or to grow my business more effectively. But oftentimes underneath that, if you go down a few layers below that, you get down to the, I'm not enough conversation. It's not available to me. I don't fit in, et cetera. Right. But yeah. confidence is an outward manifestation or not uh, of the beliefs that we have of ourselves. So I've found through my own experience, having had my confidence shattered and worked so many years to rebuild it only to have it like shift in a matter of weeks. Yeah. Once I discovered this work for myself, um, it's, it's a key component to having uh, greater success. I, and I've yeah. studied this a lot. Um, I've looked at um, people across the world. I've had interviews and conversations with folks um, and really trying to understand why do some people have confidence and why do some people not? 
you know, yeah, and it's, that's a great it's point. been fascinating. It's been fascinating. Um, I have a, a colleague who I've collaborated with um, on many different projects and she just is the embodiment of confidence. And I'm like, Sheila, you know, how long have you had this level of confidence? She's like, I don't know, since I was like five, <laughs> I was like, what? You know, and it's just <laughs> a lot of it is the environment that you're raised in, the nurturing or the lack thereof that you get um, that can have an impact one way or the other. It's it's quite fascinating. So I, I have a question for you. We're big fans of um, taking it like actions that can make a difference immediately. So I, I want to keep having this conversation, but while we're on the subject of confidence, I can't help but ask, is there any trick or tip or practice that someone could put into place today to just help give themselves like a little bit of a boost of confidence, whether it's kind of a, a short-term thing or a long-term thing, just in, anything that, that somebody might be able to do uh, while they're listening here or just after they listen here. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's as simple as writing on a sticky note, I am enough. I believe in myself and put those reminders everywhere. Tell yourself that repeatedly throughout the day, because again, your brain likes repetition. So yep. the more you think a thought, the more true it becomes for you, right? So even if you don't believe it at first, right? Sure. Keep telling yourself, I'm enough. I am enough. I am enough. I believe in myself. I can do this. And the, the more you rinse, repeat that, um, the more it will become the new habitual way of thinking that your body, mind, and spirit adopts and turns to in those moments of stress. That's awesome. Yeah. That No, that makes great sense. I, I mean, it. we're all about hacking our brains here and that's really what, what we're yes. doing is exactly that. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. And, that, that's, and that's great lead into my, my next question. Cause I, I don't get to ask this question to lots of our guests, but we're, we're kind of talking about affirmations, right? Uh, and, you know, and so I wanted to ask you, you know, and it sounds like you are, are you a believer in daily affirmations and do you recommend them to your clients? And then I also always ask, why do you, why do we, why do they work? <laughs> you know, how do, how do they work for us? Um, I, this is another yes and answer. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes, I'm good at that. Yeah. Affirmations, affirmations can help. And if, you're not getting at the root cause in the, in the, of the underlying beliefs at a subconscious level. It's, it's band-aid application. Yeah, it'll unwind. Right? Yeah. Over time. Yes, it can work. And if you say, for example, cause I've worked with a lot of people around money, you know, their yeah. money conversations and yes, I want to have more abundance. I'm creating an abundant life. Um, but if you have a subconscious conversation around money and money is bad, I don't deserve it, I'm not worthy of it, then it's it's not going to penetrate very far because your subconscious um, beliefs are always going to be more powerful than your conscious beliefs. Sorry. Yeah. So, so the affirmation is sounds like just another tool in, you know, kind of your toolbox of, of creating, you know, the the success or the life you want. Is that, is that right? Yes. Yes. It is another tool. That's why I, part of my, um, rapid rewiring program is this key component is this transformation recording because you're, you're listening to it as you're going to sleep. So it's dropping into your subconscious, right. Nice. Versus yeah. saying it at a conscious level. And that way, um, it's, it's literally building new neural pathways in your brain. The more you listen to it, the more, sh the, the, the stronger those neural pathways become, and that becomes your new go-to habit. Yeah, that's powerful. I, I, I love this whole concept. Okay. So I have a couple of questions about your business. I want to kind of jump back into, uh, we all face barriers. We're talking about overcoming them and everything. What kind of barriers have you faced with, you know, succeeding with your consulting business and, how did you break through them? Uh, you know, in the beginning, you said you reached outside to get help and other coaching, but what's, what would you attribute your success to? Uh, let's see. Tenacity <laughs> <That's> <laughs> lots <a good> one. <laughs> and lots of tenacity, <laughs> resilience, um, believing in myself that, that I can do this. Cause I've, you know, I've spent many years and listened to many experts and doing all the things that I'm told to do from experts who have made successful companies. And when I wasn't there yet, I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, but it's still not happening. It's still not happening. And what I realized 
is such a key component is making sure that your thoughts, your values, and your beliefs are in alignment with the work that you're doing. So it's coming across authentically, because if it's even slightly out of alignment with who you really are, your audience, your target market will pick up on that and it will create a a dissonance, right? Versus a resonance. Mm, And so making sure that you're finding those alignments for yourself, you know, what are my values? How do I apply them in my business? Um, Making sure that I'm, I'm speaking my truth in the work that I'm doing and um, letting that be the attractor for those ideal clients to come to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a great answer. I love it. it, it there's, there's so many pieces of that, I think, that really ring true, that resilience, that tenacity, and then, you know, and then that being authentic, right? You, you, you can't tell a story and really unless you believe it and it's true, right? I love it. Right. Yeah, I think it's great. So now I'm going to call you out a little bit because we love to talk about mistakes on this show. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we just recently published a book all about mistakes and because we think they're kind of like tuition and, and they teach us, you know, so much. Um, if look back at looking back on your career and your business with Nectar, was there a, a mistake that you could kind of call your best mistake, or I could call it that the, the one that stuck with you and taught you a valuable lesson, you know, as you've kind of built your business over the years? Um, gosh, there's probably been many mistakes, but no. the one <laughs> <laughs> stumbling, fumbling, wandering my way through the darkness. Yeah. Um, but you know, when I look back, probably one of the misguided steps I took was not asking for help. Now that Mm. might sound funny. Mm. Um, So I I grew up, as I mentioned earlier, I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. I moved across the country to get away from being in the family business (laughs) that my mom and my dad and my brother and my sister all worked in because the thought of being judged by them was like, Oh no, we're not going there. Right. So I'll start my own company and do it my way. And I had this wealth of information and guidance available to me. If I had been able to put my ego aside and ask, and it probably would have saved me countless, you know, dollars, time and energy if I had been open to receiving that guidance early on, but I wasn't. So, you know, we yeah. learn how we learn. There you go. Yeah. So we learn it. It's funny. You, you, you know, that, that comment you just made putting your ego aside. I, I think if we look back at all of the favorite mistakes that we've heard over the years, that might be at the core of about 75% of them. So yep. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. 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 Our point. egos. I mean, they serve us well, as long as we can keep them in check. Right. And, and we can't always. So there you go. Yeah. That's true. Really good. Great advice. So, uh, you know, looking over your marketing materials, doing some background here. Uh, one of the things you talk about is helping your clients overcome fear and anxiety during un- uncertain times. And, you know, we're certainly going through uncertain times right now. Ooh, Lordy. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure your business has been impacted by COVID and are your clients coming to you for help, you know, with new challenges now, or, I mean, how's that, how's it impacted you? Um, yes, it has impacted my business. You know, I have, I have individual clients that I work with and I have corporate clients that I work with as well. And the corporate things have all kind of gone on pause while everybody sorts out their budgets and figures out how to deal with these things at a, at a large scale level. But my, my one-on-one clients, they have been coming to me and, and, um, this anxiety, this depression, this fear, this frustration that is just in the air, right? It's an ether for everyone right now. So, um, now, not only through my one-on-one clients, but I've actually done um, a variety of just master classes mm. uh, for folks around how to overcome your fear and anxiety in these difficult times, and um, have made those available for everyone for free. Just because I, I just want to be of service and help folks turn down the the knob, the dial on the feeling of angst. Because I myself, I I'm a very um, 
a, a, you know, what they call a highly sensitive person. I'm very sensitive to other people's energy. And so I try not to watch the news. Um, That's tough. I, I, you know, I have to manage my energy in certain ways because otherwise it can be overwhelming. And I know there's a lot of people out there who have that same experience. So just trying to be a service as best I can. Totally. Yeah. No, that's, that's, That's you you just described all the people that think I'm an extrovert um, because, because I'm always out there, but no, no, I need to recharge sometimes too. So, yep, that's Mm -hmm. exactly it. And and with your individual clients, are you, you know, working remotely now uh, versus, you know, in person, have you made that adjustment? I'm um, actually, I've always worked remotely oh. I'll, for 20 years. I've worked um, over the phone and now over zoom for many years with my clients. So that never changed for me. I'm like, Oh, I can't go to the gym. I can't get my hair cut and I can't yeah. go out to dinner. So, um, first world problems. I'm very blessed. No, those are all place. very important <laughs> things. <laughs> I would, that, yeah, I would agree. No, that that's great. So, the last thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about money, you know, and I, I don't bring that up first because hopefully, you know, money is just an, a natural output and a byproduct from being successful and being fulfilled. But mm-hmm. it, it, based on what you said and how you've been talking, it seems like that that's not often there, you know, the case with folks that have uh, a difficult relationship with money and actually being successful. And, you know, from what I understand, what you've been talking about, it seems like you you spend a lot of time with clients getting comfortable with that. Is is that true? Um, Everyone has different um, money conversations with themselves based on what they've learned from their family of origin, from their um, culture, from where they've grown up, et cetera. You know, money comes easily. Money is hard. You have to work hard for it. Um, I don't, you don't deserve money. It's, these beliefs we inherit from the the environments that we grow up in, from our parents, from our siblings, from our grandparents, et cetera. And if you've got a money conversation that says, well, I'm not really worthy or deserving of a lot of success, you will unconsciously um, do things to sabotage yourself so that you only get to a, a particular level of success. I call it your money ceiling, right? Yeah. Um, and and once you realize that belief is there and you eliminate it, then the ceiling goes away and it, you know, all things are possible. So let me give you a great example of this. I had a, a client who came to me saying, I, I want to grow my business. Every time I get around the hundred thousand dollar mark, I, I uh, self-sabotage and then my revenues drop and then, oh yeah. And then I get this horrible bout of IBS or inflammatory bowel syndrome. I'm like, well, that sounds terrible. Let's fix that. Right. So we went in and, and through this, um, through my rapid rewiring process, we were able to get at the, the root causes of her beliefs around money and success. And for her, it was, If I have too much success, I'll be too powerful and that will be bad. So I don't want let that, I don't want that to happen. And so she would self-sabotage and, and this IBS would kick in. And this had been going on for 15 years, Okay, 15 years. And, um, we got to the end of our work together and she's like, okay, I've listened to my recording every day. I want you to know I had my biggest client meeting ever. My whole body is happy and peaceful and on board and, and I'm feeling great. And I reached back to her like a month later to get a testimonial. And it, she, I said, I said, you know, can you, can you give me a testimony about the, the, the massive changes that you've had? And she's like, what did we work on? Like it literally wow. had disappeared from her, her thinking because we had repaired and eliminated the old beliefs wow. to such a degree. And her IBS of 15 years has gone away completely. Um, her business is booming and better than ever before, you know? So it's, it's amazing how these things kind of intertwine. Yeah. Well, th- just, you know what, th- one thing that really strikes me after, you know, talking with you for the last half hour or so is the physical manifestations of these problems that I don't even really think about. You know, I'm all about, you know, we like Dave said, hacking the brain and, and you know, creating our own reality. But uh, it's fascinating that uh, you can have those same physical manifestations in your life as well. 
Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. I, I do a lot of work with clients around eliminating those physical manifestations yeah. based because of the beliefs that they had. Sure. So eliminating chronic migraines people have had for 30, 40, 50 years, um, IBS for 10, 15, 20 years, um, adrenal fatigue, Crazy. Um, arthritis, psoriasis. Yeah. Um, no, it, make, you know, it makes just, sense. It, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah when the body really is, conf- is when the when the body and mind are conflicted, it's going to manifest somewhere, and usually it's something like that. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of my one of my favorite quotes is, um, "Emotions that cannot find their vent in tears will cause other organs to weep." Oh, oh, very nice. Very good. I like and it. I, I, yeah, me too. And I, on that, you know, Michelle, thanks so much for coming on the show today and educating us about this stuff. There's just there's some super valuable lessons that I'm, I'm looking forward to at doing the editing on this one so I can listen to them over and over again. Uh, and, you know, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and to learn more about Nectar Consulting? Sure. Well, they can always visit my site, uh, NectarConsulting.com. Um, you're welcome to come uh, find me on Facebook. I have a group called Rewire for Success. Um, you're welcome to come there and um, you know be a part of this wonderful community and get some free tools and tips on helping you continually rewire your thinking for greater happiness and well-being. Um, Instagram, LinkedIn, all those wonderful things. And right. when you when you visit my website, go to the Brain Candy section, my okay. favorite place on my website. And there's tons of free resources there for everyone to enjoy as well. Is that where people will find those COVID related resources that you spoke about a few minutes ago? Um, Let's see. Actually, um, if you go to the rewire for success group, you'll find it there. I'm just, as I'm you asking me that I'm like, Oh, that's not on my website there. I (laughs) put it there. I'm glad I asked. There you go. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Uh, just like I said, some, just some really powerful stuff. I believe in it because I've kind of, you know, uh, tried to live it over the last 20, 30 years. And, uh, thank you again so much. We really appreciate having you on today. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. It's been my pleasure. Man, you know, I, I like I love this stuff. I I Me too. I've read a bunch about NLP. I'd never lear- heard it or learned about rapid transformational therapy before, but um but yeah, yeah powerful stuff because it is. It's all of that brain hacking which it turns out is body hacking too now that i've yeah, I, yeah. who knew i i really you know fortunately <laughs> don't have any experience with those kind those side effects but i you know definitely uh the things that she's talking about i've tried to embrace and tried to share with my employees partners yeah our listeners on this show we totally. talk about it so we're, we're definitely uh eating the dog food as they say yeah uh, yeah no it's but, powerful stuff it's great yeah yep. Yeah, and she, I, was, she was great. And there's so many good lessons there, you know, all about, you know, her business, starting it based on a fear thing, and then the tenacity and resilience of growing it over the years. But I also, you know, one thing I didn't mention that I, I thought I'd bring up is her her revenue stack is deep. So if you go to her link, go to Michelle's LinkedIn uh, uh, profile and look at all the things that she has done and is doing. Yep. She's using her skills across a broad uh, playing field. And I, I just think that's such a great idea. And I would encourage all of us to do that. You know, I wonder if the revenue stack and our affinity for the revenue stack is also one of those sort of fear driven things, right? Like, ah, good point. Like, right? Like we, yeah. we know that I always say the reason I have lots of different things going, I think of them all as faucets, right? Yeah. And, and you know, one of them's going to dry up at some point. Now, always. It, it might dry up because I'm not paying enough attention to it because I've got other things going on. I admit that. However, even if you're paying attention to it, sometimes that particular business just runs its course. And you can either pivot or not. And, and you know, having lots of things yeah. going sort of gives you that freedom to play a little bit. When one starts to dry up, it's like, okay, well, it it's, it's, you know, this isn't a an emergency it's something i can a- address and it keeps you from making those fear based decisions right but yeah. but in and of itself yeah. might be fear driven the, the fear of fear perhaps i don't know yeah <laughs> and and I, like i always i always make the comment to people that are just starting out or want to try something or a yeah. side hustle i always say hey you know a thousand bucks will change your life yes because it it will it, you know making your first thousand bucks whether it's a thousand a month a thousand a day a thousand a week whatever 
it, it, it changes your mindset on how this works. So, oh, wow. You know, it gives you some, like you said, some yeah. more freedom, a little more flexibility. I can make some money. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, good. A, a really, really great, uh, great thing. So I, I loved it. I loved her talking about, you know, the mistake of not asking for help. And one of the things that I have on my list is to ask our readers for help is, is with our mistakes, uh, small business pocket guide that we've published right now. It's on sale. It's 99 cents. So you certainly, you know, it's less than a buck. Invest in yourself. Read about how I lost a million dollars by a, a decision I made early one morning many years ago and how I came back from that. All of the other mistakes that our guests have shared over the years and then go up there and leave us a review. You can find the guide at businessshow.co slash guides. Indeed. Indeed. And and we we endeavor to stop making the mistake of referring to everyone that listens as a reader, even though as, yes. you're going to read our book. But, you know, there <laughs> you right. go. I, I'm mentally programming you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was intentional. That was in, of course it was. That's right. Of course. Yes, I love it. Programming. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Thanks so much, Shannon, for everything. And uh, we will see you next time. Make sure you keep living that charmed life. <laughs>